Now that I've completed my record-breaking pole-to-pole aviation expedition, the real fun begins. I have the incredible opportunity to showcase the citizen of the world, its state-of-the-art STEM experiments, and all that my mission of world peace represents to millions of aviation enthusiasts around our beautiful planet. Here in sunny Lakeland, Florida, at Sun and Fun's Aerospace Expo, one of the world's largest annual aviation events, I'll also be meeting up with top aviators and educators to showcase how they are changing the world for the better. This is truly an exciting time to be a citizen of the world. And tell us just a little bit about the citizen. The Citizen of the World is a 1983 Turbine Commander 900. It's the Gulfstream version, and it's the faster of the last couple models that they built. It's a little bit lighter. We've modified her in over 50 different ways, and I would say there was nothing that we could have done to make her fly faster, further, or higher than she actually did. I want to start off by explaining why. There were a lot of reasons why, but for me, I was getting tired of not seeing the change that I wanted to see in the world. And I felt like it was time to draw together my resources, my supporters, and go out into the world at a time when the world needed, needed it the most and try and be the living example. It sounds to me like that aircraft and your activity in that aircraft could have possibly broken some world records. We definitely broke some world records and I want to emphasize that it was a mission of many and that's why I often say we. Uh, some of the records we broke were the longest uh, flight in a twin turboprop of that class, 18.1 hours. First time carrying a NASA wafer scale experiment. First time carrying a plastic particle experiment for Scripps. First time using biofuels over the poles, and the first time using ADSB in and out over the poles. So, Mark, we were honored to carry the AOPA 80th anniversary logo around the world over the poles during the anniversary year. And uh, AOPA has done so much for aviation. I first want to thank you. But I also want to ask you, what impact does STEM have on aviation? Because we carried three different scientific experiments on the trip. Well, first off, thanks and congratulations to you for taking the citizen around the world. Uh, but STEM education is one of the very most important things early on in people's education. To understand all the math that's involved, if you will, in aviation, from flying the aircraft, to building the aircraft, to maintaining the aircraft, or controlling the aircraft. And these careers that we put together in the high school from the 9th to the 12th grade classes today are great equalizer, getting any kid that wants to be involved in aviation an opportunity. Mark, the plane is the citizen of the world, and she visited 22 countries, six continents, met so many amazing people along the way, and I found that there were more similarities than differences amongst people. What, what does it mean to you to be a citizen of the world? Well, the citizen of the world is a great caption of representing that you can do this, we want you to do this, and it's a great way to share. And I've had the opportunity to travel around the world, not like you have, in my own airplane, but I have been around the world and flown general aviation in most of the continents. One of the things I find in every place you go, whether it's the middle of Africa, or the middle of Australia, or anywhere else, people want to fly, and they want to have the opportunity to touch the aircraft, talk to you, and get excited about it. It's one of the things I find universal in this world. People do want to talk about, find a way to engage in flying. You mentioned something to me before we came on here today that kind of piqued my interest a little bit. Is the It's a mobile STEM lab? That's right. Explain that to me, because I that's a new concept to me. This is the citizen's second life, because the first life was setting the records and collecting the data. But now what we want to do is share the experiments, the, the STEM education component of the trip with young kids and help inspire them and aspiring pilots as well. So the great thing is you can see the NASA wafer scale experiment. You can actually touch the sticky tape that we use to collect plastic particles 
Uh, you can see banners on each of the experiments. And I think it's pretty cool to see a plane uh, that's made history to be able to touch it. And we've prepared her. Artcraft Paint did a brand new uh, ceramic coating on top of a new paint job for us. We have a new interior and she's ready for the job. Elizabeth, we're sitting here in front of the Citizen of the World, which is our mobile STEM lab after the completion of the pole-to-pole -pole flight. And we're focused very much on the science that was involved during the polar circumnavigation. Why is science and STEM so important for aviation? STEM is really the foundation for our future. So whether you want to be a pilot or an engineer or a scientist, it really doesn't matter. But getting excited about STEM and getting excited about uh, math and science you know, aviation is a great way to do that because it brings it all together in one place. Even if you don't end up making this your career, you're going to learn so much and you're going to have so much fun doing it. Elizabeth, the plane is called the Citizen of the World and it's visited 22 countries on six continents. And during the trip we found that there were more similarities and differences amongst people. What does it mean to you to be a citizen of the world? To me, being a citizen of the world means being open to all the adventures and experiences that the world has to offer and sharing them with as many people as you can. You know, that's something that you have done in an amazing way with this flight and this aircraft. And it's something that we hope to do with our curriculum. Invite students in, uh, welcome them into the world of aviation, and show them all that this amazing world has to offer. Well, you're doing some amazing work at AOPA. I want to thank you. And I'm looking forward to learning more about the programs and how we can support you to inspire more people to fly. Well, thank you so much. And congratulations on your great accomplishments uh, thank here. Thank you. It was a mission of many. You know, you're providing a lot of information that is going to be of a benefit to humanity. You know, not just that, Wayne, we're also showing that if you want to be an, involved in aviation, you don't just have to be a pilot. You know, certainly you can be a mechanic, you can be a scientist that's using aviation. We like to think that the, the plane, the citizen of the world, was our vehicle for our message. But like I said before, also a mobile STEM lab. That's a, it, it's an exciting thing to hear you talk about, and I'm sure it's got to be personally very satisfying. Yeah, thanks so much, Wayne. I appreciate your interest in the trip and your continued support. So, John, what you're doing here at Sun and Fun is amazing. You guys have been at it for years, and it's designed in part to inspire people to fly, especially young pilots. How do you go about doing that? Well, you know, our mission is pretty simple. We wrote this down about five years ago. It's to engage, educate, and accelerate that next generation of aerospace professionals. And one of the things we are trying to show is that you can be involved in aviation, but you don't have to be a pilot. You know, you can be into the science behind it and still be involved. And I know you guys are doing the same thing to promote these other areas. Yeah, the idea um, of sharing that kind of experiments worldwide it does a couple of things. One, it's obviously that you're showing the science behind the creation of tomorrow's technology, whatever that's going to be. And at the same time, you're showing them that the way to expose more people to it, real time, where it has true physical value, is physically being there. Now we could we can video teleconference all day long, but I can't put my hands on a on a, a scientific experiment unless I'm there. Well, you brought it in an airplane. You become an emissary of the sciences by traveling the world with these projects that exposes them to the sciences, and at the same time, you're showing them that the best way to do this is, how about travel by air? It's the fastest way. And ultimately, we'll be traveling by air better, faster, and funnier in the future as we increase our dynamics of flight, shrink the cost to operate, and speeds to travel, and capacity, and it'll be bigger and better than ever. I mean, let's face it, Lindbergh shrunk the world in, in 1927. And so it continues to shrink endlessly now. I just knew that in those times of extreme stress, when you're in a really remote place, it's sort of a new reality and it's the learning experience there that's possible is I don't think equal anywhere on the planet. And for me, I felt like it broke me completely at the South Pole and what I came to realize later is that it broke me open. 
And um, I thought, okay, well that's done. I'm glad we got that out of the way. And then the North Pole was, you know, pretty bad too. So I guess I had more, more learning to do. Why is STEM important for aviation now? Well, it's a venue. You know, sometimes uh, there's, there's a lot of people. In fact, the other night we had a banquet and it was a STEM-based and here were some graduates and they just didn't have the financial wherewithal, you know, wherewithal to, to get their education. So STEM provided that uh, financial relief to uh, let them try to aspire to what they wanted, their dream and their carrot. And here these kids said, we didn't have it with our family. I earned this scholarship, I had to earn every step of the way, and now that person graduated actually is now a captain with Endeavor Airlines. He aspired to be in the airlines, and he did. He says if it wasn't for the STEM here at Lakeland, never would have made it. So your plane has a name, and my plane, the citizen of the world, obviously has a name. And part of that was that when we found people were more similar than different, and we were all actually connected as one, you know, everybody, in my mind, is a citizen of the, the world, the bigger picture. And I'm just curious what being a citizen of the world might mean to you. Well, you know, that I view this as I can make a difference in a small way. And with this airplane, it's a venue to allow me to attract. Because I have a lot of people, whether it's young, old, they all use this mechanism and I can talk to them and convey a message to them via this vehicle. And um, otherwise, I'm on the board of EAA, we have the Young Eagles program, uh, where my wife and I are tremendous supporters of all the younger uh, outreach programs to help facilitate the young people being able to fly. Teresa, since Sun and Fun started, hundreds of people have come up and commented on how beautiful the citizen of the world looks. And I want to thank you for your 30 years of experience and wisdom that went into making this paint job so beautiful and the impact that it'll have on future generations. You know, when they come up and they see it and they go, wow, that's the coolest thing in the world. You know, I want to get involved in aviation. So thank you and thank you to your team. Well, no, thank you for giving us the opportunity to work in this beautiful machine. And it's our job and our passion to make sure that every single aircraft gets treated properly and that we gave the coating that needs to be put it on to protect the skin. And, you know, no aircraft should be neglected. No aircraft should be just being uncared because what it is, is represents who you are and represents how much do you care for this beautiful world, which is aviation. Teresa, the name of the plane is Citizen of the World, and I, I believe that the plane represents so many people. She visited 22 countries on six continents, and we found that there were more similarities than differences. What does it mean to you to be a citizen of the world? Citizen of the world for me is who I am. I immigrated from another country. I ended in aviation. I, you know, I have the same core values, family, friendship, um, aviation, um, just like everybody else around the world, we're humans. Doesn't matter what color you are, what lang language you speak, the beauty of uh, aviation is that, that you can fly to continents, you can fly to countries, you can fly to cities, you can fly with friends, with strangers, and it means the same thing. You know, and so citizen of the world, it's just the perfect name for humanity. For all the world aviation pilots, please go out there, empower young kids, 
empower young women, share with them what a beautiful industry is, and make sure that nobody is being left behind. Make sure that everybody has an opportunity to see what it is. It's on us, the ones that are in the industry already. You know, I know Russ Wazleski, he loved to read um, and be part of this uh, show here. I, I'm sure he's going to want to read a book that you have. Do you have anything written right now that you can find? Absolutely. We have uh, Zen Pilot, Flight of Passion and the Journey Within from 2015 for the first equatorial circumnavigation. The Little Plane That Could is designed for kids ages 2 to 6. And then my very first book was called Flying Through Life, which is how I manifested the resources of time and money to be able to do these circumnavigations. And then the fourth book is in editing. It's called Peace Pilot to the Ends of the Earth and Beyond. And that should be out in about six months because this very much was a peace flight as well because it connected the North and South Poles and everybody in between on this mission of peace. All this work, this effort, overcoming this fear, was it worth it? It was very much worth it. And I don't want to mislead you and think it was a mission of one, it was a mission of many. We've had uh, 95 sponsors and supporters. We have a board of very inspired people and what I call angels, which are people that are helping out in their own ways. I knew that you were, there's something special going on and you're working very, very hard for a, a specific reason and uh, it's, it's world peace. You have been laser focused on what you're doing and uh, I, I admire that and I hope that we as an industry can, can use you as a model. Well, thank you. You know, after 2015, when I did the circumnavigation along the equator, we wanted to go even bigger and better. And we wanted to do what I had written about in my first book called Flying Through Life, which was pursue the impossibly big dream. So after that flight, the next thing was world peace. And it sounds like a lot to even say, but you know, we figured out that the North and South Poles were the two places where peace has always existed. And we wanted to connect those two on a mission of world peace and everyone in between. So in addition to the science that we carried on board, uh, we were focused on trying to help people see the similarities amongst people. And for the docu-series, we interviewed so many different types of people, Zulu Rangers in South Africa, uh, dog sled mushers in Ushuaia, Argentina, uh, ballerinas in Sofia, Bulgaria. And what we found is that everybody wanted the same thing. They wanted health, happiness, peace, family, joy, and it's really what connects us all as humans. Robert, thank you so much. Thank for, you so much. For your time. Your interest in and uh, we will, uh, we're, we're watching you. We're, as they say, we're, we're watching you. <laughs>